officer needs assistance, possible 187. Robert Yummy Sandifer was an American gang member whose murder by fellow gang members in Chicago, Illinois garnered national attention. He appeared on the cover of Time magazine in September 1994. Nicknamed Yummy because of his love of junk food, Sandifer was a young member of the street gang The Black Disciples. After committing murder, arson, and armed robbery, he was executed by fellow gang members who feared he could become an informant. Coverage of Sandifer's death and retrospective on his short, violent life were widely published in American media. Sandifer became a symbol of the gang problem in American inner cities. Yummy, only 11 years old, was known for bullying and extorting money from local children in the community in the Chicago neighborhood of Roseland. He liked luxury cars such as Lincoln and Cadillac and remarkably was able to drive them despite his small stature. Many of his 23 felonies and 5 misdemeanors were committed in the course of running errands for street gangs. The penal system had no way to keep him out of trouble and the courts were helpless to lock him away because he was too young for juvenile detention and too dangerous to be placed with children his own age. Man, free Casey, man, free Casey, man. 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 Free Hey, oh, shout out to my cousin, man. Look, I mean, they, they, man, off that shit. Dude. Shit off the twinkers, man. He off the dope, man. We've seen it, O-Block. Damn, man, this nigga fucked up, man. I'm fresh Tomorrow, out, man. Don't worry, we're taking your group. You know we rock, man. This shit don't stop, man. We keep crushing stock, man. We stay pop box, man. You know, stay off the twinks, man. Let's go. 
I saw him pull the gun out. Andre Easter was at the front door as the service ended, just after Pastor Corey Brooks had preached an anti-violence eulogy about turning to faith. It's hard uh, to get people to believe that message uh, when you have such evil right at the doors of a church. He was hollering gang signs, talking to a couple of guys, and then he just pulled out the gun and everybody started scattering. I seen people jumping down in between the pews and, and getting up under the seat, so I I ran. Hundreds of people inside, including investigators, believe the gunman, identifying as many as four targets and hitting two of them, including this woman's son. And as he was coming out, they just shot him a lot of times, a lot of times. Is nothing sacred anymore? Well, no uh, areas are sacred nowadays because violence is learned behavior. Guys feel they're going to catch you wherever they can catch you. Anti-violence activist Andrew Holmes showed me a cell phone picture of one of the victims on the sidewalk where parishioners spent the summer marching for peace in this neighborhood. Talk about, you know, running these type of people out of our neighborhood, but I mean, then they're going to go to another neighborhood and do the same thing, so we got to transform their hearts. Mary Sistrunk says she preached similar words to her now dead son just this morning when he apparently knew he had a bounty on his head. He said, Mama, they going to kill me. I said, they're going to kill you while you lay your head. You need to leave from there and get God in your life. Too many young people was dying. This is her second child. Please stop the killing. I feel like a motherless child. We want to see what your life was like. We did My Block Chicago. Check this out. Okay, we're back. My Block Chicago. I'm sitting next to the young homie, Lupe Fiasco. They call me Lupe. He's sweaty. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? They're hot, but at the end of the day, you feel good. It's freedom out here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take a trip to the other side of Chicago where you grew up. Free side, all right? The hoodie hood. 
What was it about that 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 you know just triggered this emotion from you? Just looking back. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, yeah. There's some of them dudes with that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you got dudes. You know. Uh, Chicago, the murder capital. Uh-huh. You know, the dudes in that video, you know, in a, a prison, uh-huh. a couple fake cases, and then there's ghosts. Uh-huh. You, see, you see people that ain't, you know, that ain't there. Uh-huh. An aspiring rapper from the suburbs took a fatal bullet to the back of the head on the far south side, becoming yet another casualty of Chicago's shooting epidemic. Ulysses, also known as Chris, a 19-year-old graduate of Oak Park River Forest High, became at least the fourth aspiring teen rapper to get shot and killed in Chicago since September. Chris modeled his hip-hop alter ego, YPN Boomtown, after Chief Keefe, the Inglewood teen rap sensation he was related to by marriage. Chris's stepfather, Alfonso Cozart, said he is the father of Chief Keefe, whose real name is Keefe Cozart. The family connection isn't believed to have anything to do with Chris's slaying, though authorities said Chris was gunned down in a car near 124th Street in South Union after visiting his uncle in West Pullman. He later died at the Roseland Hospital, authorities said. Tate, Chris's mother, who returned to Chicago after getting the tragic news in Arkansas, identified her son's body at the morgue and visited the spot where he was killed. Somebody shot my son in the back of his head and now he's dead. She said, she said, I want to see where he passed. Chief Keefe and his immediate family, however, do not recognize Chris or Alfonso Cozart for that matter. As family, the rapper's lawyer and maternal grandmother said Chief Keefe wasn't friendly and had nothing to do with the kid. Attorney Dennis Berkson said and Chief Keefe has no relationship with his father. The killer of Chief Keefe's stepbrother was never apprehended. I get crucified for my niggas. You and them still want to one fuck, boy. The whole squad gonna get you. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So we just spoke with the bus guard. Thank you. 
and she's saying that um with this little jojo incident it's right she said right down here we walking on this block right now this uh 69th and harvard i just noticed these these blocks around here 69th and harvard yale princeton those names are colleges famous colleges you know what i'm saying we deep on the south side right now Shit, I gotta be careful over here to be honest with you. He was like, I'm on 69. He said, the BDK and woo woo, this is BD territory. This is where the BDs be at for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Them L's and everything. Look at the wall. These niggas claim 300, but we BDK. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I, have, I don't got no affiliation with it, you understand? But all this, look at, look at the walls though. If people done signed the walls, Everybody done wrote their little sayings. You know what I'm saying? You get caught up in this shit. This real life. This where little JoJo got killed. Stains on the ground. You feel me? Shit. This it right here. This real. This ain't fake. This ain't fake. Right here. Hold on. In fact, look. Here go the tape. It don't get no realer than this. It don't get no realer than this. Hold you. Hey, hey, Jax. Hey, Jax. You can hear it in the distance. You can hear police telling us to get down. Someone opened fire just blocks away from our TV crew. An additional seven gunshots could be heard as police ran toward the scene. You see them there. Unclear if anyone was injured from that gunfire. Thankfully, our crew is fine tonight.